So this is what the zinc looks like down at the bottom of the kettle after the section of metal was removed. And then I have to go and finish the entire bottom 46 feet away. The challenge we're up against is we have two inches of the actual kettle bottom right here. But then we have about four inches of all this zinc right here. So we're going to be coming in with the torch to cut the metal but then the torch is going to hit this zinc and it's going to flare up and it's going to melt the zinc melts around 830 820 degrees and it's going to blow everything back out so sometimes it's going to be necessary to do two passes the first pass is basically we hope for the best but we want to heat up this lower bottom zinc and have it expand and contract as it heats up and cools so it will fall down and fall away from the, the metal bottom so that the second time we come through we have a nice clean cut we have a, a gap down below here that we can end up being successful in being able to make our cut sometimes I'm, I could be lucky enough to just do it one pass and then we'll see so we'll use the track cutter on the top and then we have to hand cut down on the side to start off with, the PPE we're going to use, we're going to have a welding jacket, a full screen welding helmet, we have a respirator, some gloves, and then for safety's sake we have a fire extinguisher and a fire blanket because we're going to be up against these trees and such and the last thing we want is for a spark to fly over and set everything ablaze. So we're going to be uh, doing a fire watch after this. To make sure we don't have any problems so we're going to be using the gopher 3 as a track cutter and we're cutting every eight feet and i have this all lined up we're going to go ahead and set the magnets in it's more than eight feet our forklift can't really handle it too well We're going to go ahead and connect the fuel and the oxygen. The red is the fuel, and you got to remember when they have the little notches in the nut here, that's a reverse thread. So we're doing exactly opposite of what comes natural. And this will take probably twice as much oxygen as a normal job. And Although I'm not using a number three tip, if I'm if I'm cutting through if I'm if I'm cutting through two inches, it would call for a number three tip. We're using a number four because I'm going in at an angle. I'm just snugging up these fittings here. Uh, this little device right here, when it's down like that, the gas will flow, and you can flip this up and, and shut off all the, uh, the the gases at the same time. We have the little circuit breaker right here. We have the speed indicator 
or the speed control here. Then we have forward and reverse there. And uh, then over here we have all the different adjustments. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this in. And we're gonna speed this up and we're gonna send it all the way to this side of the kettle bottom. Okay, we're gonna bring this right over the edge here so we can set up our initial flame. Of course, you have all this white powder that's gonna be all over the torch. That's from all the zinc. I already checked the tip, our tip is clean. And uh, because we are going out of bevel, so we're cutting more like around two and a half, two and a quarter inches. I'm going with a, with a number four tip, not with a number three. And according to the specs on the number four, we're going to be at 40 to 50 on our oxygen and five to 11 on our acetylene. I kind of prefer the upper limits of those numbers. And we want to make sure that our extension cord and our gas hose won't get caught up. So we're about ready to light this guy up. If I sound funny, I apologize. I'm wearing my respirator. I have my oxygen tank valve open quite a ways. I have my settling just a quarter of a turn. So this is similar to a normal setup. Like a, a standard cutting torch. This adjustment, of course, is for the cutting oxygen, which is going to be this lever right here. And then we have the two levers, the two uh, valves down here for the gas and oxygen. So we're going to go ahead and light this up. So we're going to go ahead and light this up with the settling first. So you can kind of see the soot coming out. So I'm going to go ahead and increase this until the soot starts disappearing. And then we're going to go ahead and add the oxygen. And we're going to do this until we get a nice feather right here. And then when I apply my oxygen, we want the feather to remain the same. That's pretty good right there. I'm going to go ahead and slow my speed down. And I take it right to the edge. Just pretty good right there. And I'm going to be running this at about a 10 to 12 on the speed. And I start at 10 and take it up to 12. That seems to be the sweet spot. I'm not ready to start the oxygen here. Not quite yet. And I'm about a quarter inch off of here, so I'm going to drop my feather down closer to the work. Now about an eighth of an inch off the top. There we go. Right now I'm cutting through the entire kettle wall, so it's not just two inches I'm cutting through, but probably about four to six inches. And as soon as I pass the kettle wall, I'm going to speed this up just a little bit. Nine through the bottom of the kettle. And you can see I'm hitting some of that zinc. It's kind of kicking back. That's why we have that tip angled. And you can see all the zinc smoke coming up. That's why I'm wearing the respirator. But I do not want to get sick tonight. So I'm going to speed this up just a little bit. Up to 12. And so far we don't have any zinc right below the cut. Usually it's at the far end is what I'm going to run into a lot of that zinc that wasn't able to fall down. And as I track across, I want to keep my gap between my feather and the wet pretty good. This is not a perfect bottom, but I just want to make sure I got the good gap there. I'm going to take this up to 12. And this seems to be cutting clean and pretty good.
If you get any kind of gerbils out here, sometimes the tech will actually get stuck on the weld or the whatever might be here, and they'll actually bind up and stop the machine from tracking. Now, if this was just regular two-inch steel, it'd be a piece of tape, but when you're dealing with all the zinc, that's why I have to take all the precautions. When you get that zinc sickness, it's like having the flu, and it's not fun. It's, it's a temporary sickness, a temporary sickness, but still, it's not a good thing. And as we're cutting this, we just want to keep an eye on our extension cord and our line. We don't want to have it get snagged on something that will stop the machine from cutting. And every now and then as I'm doing this, I hear, I hear, I will hear a thump. And that's the zinc that's on the bottom that has moved around and has actually dropped and hit the ground. So far, no thumps. Even though I'm wearing a respirator, I'm still going to stay upwind from all this zinc vapor that I'm producing. I just don't want to get sick, and it's not a good thing to get. And I don't know if it's a wise tale or science, but usually they say that when you get that zinc sickness, if you drink a lot of milk or cream, that is supposed to help. Well, when I get zinc sickness, I always have myself a big milkshake. Not that it's going to kill me, just it's a good comforting food for me. Now, down here at the edge, I got a large weld going right here. So if I come close to this, I might have to raise my tip to go up and over this weld. Now, this is where my big weld is right here, so i got to watch my gap. It looks like it's going to go over the chest. Fine, maybe pull this out just a hair. And I'm going to throw this down. Now that I'm getting to that wall, because now I'm going to be cutting through five to six inches of metal. Okay, that pretty much does that, so I'm going to turn off my oxygen here. And then turn off my gas. My oxygen, I mean, and then turn off my gas. So, that's the first cut. That went without any incident. I'm hoping the other cuts go as well. My first cut is done. I'm getting ready to bring my cutter down to this next location. Another eight feet of weight. So I'm getting ready to do my next cut. I'm just gonna get the shovel and just kind of knock off any dingleberries that might be around here. I'm gonna go back here and release the magnets. Now I just did this cut in front of me, and what I do not want to oxygen my gas lines through this hot cut I just made so I'm gonna have to be careful to lift this up and keep it off the cut we're going to go ahead and gauge the magnets and bring this guy back home to get ready to set up the other side and I have my fire blanket down here, or what's left of my fire blanket, just to keep any sparks from igniting the dead leaves and the woods and the twigs and the trees. And I have my handy dandy fire extinguisher. So we're ready to do another cut.
It's a pretty sight to see when you can look down and see that you cut all the way through. And it's nice and straight, nice and smooth. That was fun. Now this one I got to cut by... This I got to cut by hand. So I'm using my fire blanket to keep my leg from being burned up here. So we're going to turn on the fuel. Get rid of the black set. And get our oxygen here. Nice feather. I'm going to go ahead and start at the bottom, facing downward. Here's my line, so I'm going to go straight up to this. And unfortunately, I'm a shaker. I can't get really nice straight lines here. Okay, so that's my other line. I gotta do that one, two, three more times. I'll be done with this job. I guess I didn't cut that one very well. This is all the bottom zinc that was at the bottom of the kettle. Made quite a mess trying to cut this up. <laughs> 